Hello Salemites. Welcome to Salem for your daily dose. This is a weekly update for Days of Our Lives for the week of May 1st through May 5th, which is today. What's going on in Salem? Oh my goodness. That's what we're getting ready to see. Well, uh, as we start out, you know, I've always thought that Kate was alive because they never had her body. And I said that in previous videos that, you know, that I, well, what I thought wasn't exactly right, but what was right is that she is alive. I thought that Bo did shoot her and that perhaps uh, Dr. Wolf um, had taken her, you know, resuscitated her and had her tucked away somewhere until I seen that Rolf had been detained and arrested along with Megan and um, what's that little slime ball's name? Um, it's my girl uh, Susan's brother. I can't think of his name to save my life. But I know his last name was Thomas Banks. That's what his name is. Thomas Banks. Just when you think there wasn't anybody more slimy than Leo Stark, I give you Thomas Parks. Oh, he's a little critter, isn't he? So anyway, uh, I forgot what I was saying about him. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Okay. Um, oh yeah, that's what I thought. You know, had happened to Kate uh, until I found out that all these other people had been arrested. I thought that Kate would had been taken by Roth. He was secretly keeping her because he, you know, I was, I think a lot of times about Roth, I thought, you know, wouldn't you hate to be his girlfriend? I mean, you never know, you know, when you were going to sleep, when you were sleeping at night or something, if he wasn't hooking some wires to you draining information out of you about every little thing or something just seems uh, wouldn't be mar want to be married to him uh, I mean he's he's perfectly you know attractive and everything but I'm just saying <laughs> I don't I don't think so uh, I don't think so you know you don't want someone who brainwashes people but then again you know if he really did care about you you wouldn't have to worry about dying because he could be reviving you time after time. Uh, anyway, to get back to Kate. Uh, so, we see her, I think it was Friday when we left off. We seen her cutting fish, chopping fish's head off, heads off. You know, cleaning fish on a boat. I think it was Friday. But anyway, it opens up today, on this day, Monday. And she's on the boat, chopping off, chopping up fish, cleaning fish, basically. Have you ever cleaned a fish? I guess it was my dad made me learn how to clean fish when I was young. He took me fishing with him, you know. I did not like it. I was not a kid that said, yeah, let's go fishing. I was a kid that would go, you know, hide under a table. I didn't want to go fishing. I don't like the I don't like the way fish feel. I don't like their scales. I don't like it. I like to eat fish. I don't like to catch them. And I can't catch them and look at them and chop their heads off and go over and f fry them up on the campfire and then eat them with their little heads just laying a few feet away from me. I can't do it. I can't do it. Anyway, she's on there. I'm never going to get through this. She's on there uh, cleaning up the fish. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering, you know, how'd she get here? Who's got her? What's happening? So, it looks like what happened was when we we seen, or do we just see it this week that we find out that Bo did not kill Kay? Oh, it was last week. We see his little re brain recording that he just told her to run, and she did. So, apparently, according to the man who's got her, you know, she told him she was thankful that he rescued her out of that little 
piece of crap boat because I guess she was getting ready to drown or whatever. But he's kept her in the boat and had her cleaning fish all this time. And they feed her disgusting stuff. It's not looking like fish. I mean, I don't know. It looks kind of like, you know, I want to say porridge. <laughs> Did the bears have some porridge? Uh, but, you know, it looked like some oatmeal, maybe some grits, something like that. I don't know. Uh, it didn't look particularly appetizing. And the way she scringed up her face, I'm pretty sure it was not good. Alright, so she's there, and I'm wondering why she there. And apparently he saved her from death in the ocean there, or whatever, wherever she is, in Greece. So, now she's basically his slave, I guess. He looks like uh, he's probably a fisherman, has a fishing boat. So, he's, you know, just using her to help clean the fish and stuff. Okay, EJ is all got his butt in a twist. Because Gabby, because Stefan gave Gabby a job at Demera. And her job is to evaluate EJ, and then she's going to give that report to the board. You know, that doesn't make that whole little thing does not add up and make sense to me. Uh, anyway, EJ summons Belle, tells her it's an emergency to the mansion. And she gets over there, and she is so aggravated when she finds out that his emergency was her stressing out over Gabby. Excuse me, him stressing out over Gabby. You know, and she's like, you know, my husband is dealing with a real emergency. You know, she told him about Sean shooting Bo and all that. Well, they had their words and she left because she was already you know, fed up with his, his craziness. So, um, she was pretty pissed about that. Uh, Sean... Is dealing with some major guilt over shooting his dad still even though everyone's telling him it's not your fault you thought he was gonna hurt your mother yada 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 so you know you can't blame him for feeling bad but I mean why didn't he just say dad drop it I guess he thought he didn't have time to do that uh, everyone is happy that Kate got away and she's not dead. Especially Roman, who is now in Italy. So, who is all in Italy now? Patch. Kate. No. Well, Kayla's still in Italy on Monday. But she does go home at the end of the week. Friday. So, that would be Kayla Patch. Chad, Stephanie, but Stephanie and Stephanie and Kayla came back home. They come back home on Friday. So, um, Victor and Maggie head out to Greece later this week. Uh, we've got Harris, we've got Donovan, we've got all kinds of people in Greece here. Sean, uh, Load them up. Now we need Belle out there, right? She does need to go out there and be with her husband, man. I don't know why she's not. Um, okay. Um, so everybody's, you know, Harris is ready to ship out. He says his goodbyes um, to everybody. But then, right before he's ready to just ship off, uh, Andrew Donovan asked him if he would help Patch and Chad and help them to locate Kate. And with his naval SEAL experience, they think he would be beneficial in helping. Although the other team members, i.e. Steve, uh, they're not all so crazy about that. Alright, so we move on to Tuesday. So stupid 
uh, Leo publishes that story called Kissing Cops, which is about, you know, Rafe and Jada kissing when they were high on the biscuits. The biscuit high. The BHI. Okay. I'm going to have to stop a minute. No? Okay, so Leo publishes the story The Kissing Cops. It's just ridiculous. Uh, thanks to Sloan. Sweet Bits is now out of business. The health department has shut them down. Um, it's very uh, sad for Chanel and Paulina. And Paulina tells Chanel, we're going to get that Sloan Peterson. That's what she thinks, but it ain't Sloan. We now know it's Sloan's brother and Talia. But it looks like Sloan's not privy to all that. Xander and Chloe look for an apartment. And while they're looking at this apartment, other people show up that is also interested in renting it. And that would be Brady and Leo. Brady wants it for him and Rachel. And Leo's looking for a place for him and Gwenny. So they all had words, that's for sure. He's trying to say something that's not true. You know, Xander goes over and breaks his pencil and says, you work for me and your work is done here now. So he still is looking at the apartment for him and uh, Gwen. And of course, you know, he's going to have to tell Gwen that, what's going on over there. Um, Colin asks Talia to s sweep in on Chanel. Swoop in on Michelle, Chanel. And um, he wants her to break his heart. It's not enough that her bakery is closed down. That all this, he's basically ruined her. But now he wants somebody to get in a relationship with her and then throw her under the bus. Get rid of her, yada yada yada, and that person is Talia. So he's asking his girlfriend Talia to have some kind of torrid affair with Chanel and then to dump her. I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't like Colin. I was watching him today. I don't like the way he talks. I don't like the way he looks. I don't like nothing about his ass. So, and it's not that he's just, uh, you know, trying to seek out vengeance over his mother. He's just. Seems like he's manipulating Talia quite a bit, and I don't like guys like that. So, you, you're a loser, man. So, anyway, um, I'm going to tell you right now, Brady is just an idiot anymore, isn't he? He's just so wrapped up in trying to get Chloe back, and I don't blame Chloe, you know. So she ends up telling Brady, you know, he's she's trying to tell him, you know, we're just going to be roommates. And he's like, well, it looks to me like you're a kept woman. He's going to foot the bill. And, you know, that really upset Chloe, and I don't blame her. I don't blame her. He needs to just go on, man. He's got nerve to tell her what a terrible person Xander is when he hooked up with the likes of Kristen Demera. Give me a break. Um, they end up just saying their goodbyes and you know they were both crying you know but Chloe had to explain to him how you know she felt responsible for you know Rachel being you know all bent out of shape and stressed out over her and Brady so you know she just said because he was such a good dad they could never be together it would always be like a problem and he keeps trying to tell her you know Rachel's gonna grow up it's not always gonna be like this so. they cried what's that song let's just kiss and say goodbye 
and that's what they did. So Chloe and Xander were just decided to have some pizza on the floor of their new apartment. And she was telling him how it was over. Oh, uh, let me see. Meanwhile, Gwenny is getting ready to have a real bad day. First of all, she has to get on Leo. He just has always thought he needs to be treated with the utmost respect. And he needs to have the best of everything. No. So he's really, I guess, running up the tab at the hotel there. He ordered like a $65 breakfast. I mean, he's just so. But anyway, Alex came over knocking on the door, and she thought he was there for a fur, a cat fur to make kitten britches. He thought she was there to, she thought he was there for a bootay call. So, you know, Leo clears out, and Alex talks to her and tells her, you know, I'm, I'm in therapy with Dr. Evans, and I'm just, this isn't a good thing just to have this, you know, physical relationship with you. It's not good. I'm avoiding things in my own life, blah, 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 blah. So, she, he basically dumped Gwen. So, you know, she was like, Really, she was crying a little bit. But then, Matty came back. And uh, he didn't want to tell her. But he said, I hate to be the one to tell you this. But, Chloe and Xander are moving in together. You know, she oh, she was just losing it. it. It hurt her. It really did. But then, Leo said, but it is a two-bedroom. And she took the pillow off her head. What? So, you know, you might could actually believe they're going to be roommates. Which they are. Will they end up in a relationship? I don't know. I don't really like Sander, but then sometimes I do. When he's sometimes he's very considerate and kind. So and sometimes he's just a goof, a nasty goof, like he was to Sarah. Um, Jada is just not letting it go. She is so on to her sister. Um, she talked to Paulina again. She is really starting to piece things out. I mean, piece, piece out. Piece things together. So, we move on to Wednesday where Chloe and Xander, Brady and Leo. And that was Tuesday. I all showed up to see the apartment. I got it on my Wednesday list. Chloe and Brady say their goodbyes. Oh, Talia kisses Chanel. So I guess she's going to do what her slimy little boyfriend told her to do. And, uh, you know, Chloe and Chanel now are seeing each other. And Talia's not gay and never been into girls and never been in a relationship with girls. She's just, and she doesn't want to do it. Um... Jada is hot on Talia's trail. Maggie ends up putting Alex in charge of the company again. Because Victor called her, told her about Bo was alive, and he's headed off to Greece. Now, she wishes she could go, but she's got to go in the country. So... Alex says, give me another chance, Maggie. She was very reluctant, but decided to, and he's going to prove himself to her. Um, Sloan runs into uh, Okay, now we're moving on to Thursday. Gabby and Stefan are still screwing with EJ and Nicole. But Nicole does turn it around and says she's got a scathing report on Stefan. Now, Sloane runs into EJ in front of the pub, and they introduce themselves to each other. And in their conversation, she happens to let it slip about Eric and Nicole 
sleeping together when they were on the biscuits. EJ did not do that, and Sloan definitely seemed like she didn't mean to do that, to wrap them out. But now he knows, and he's furious. Nicole uh, confronts Eric in the square about being back with Sloan. You know, he's seen her giving her a rose and cozying up to her when he said he was done with her. And he explained they work things out and they are now officially together, a couple. And I think that would be good for Sloan and Eric, except for one little wrench that Nicole's about to throw into everybody's life. So, um, Chanel ends up talking to her mom, telling her about Talia and all that stuff. And that was Thursday. And there was a lot of other stuff in between there. But I'm not going to write down every single thing that happened. I just kind of round it up, round it down, skim it, just give you the highlights. Okay, Friday. Patch has some strong discussions about why he doesn't want Harris helping them. But, you know, like Chad tells him, you know, he saved me and Stephanie's lives. You know, he may not have told Hope when he should have about Bo, but if it wasn't for him, Stephanie and I would be dead. So, hey, Patch, get your head out of your butt. Um, EJ runs into Eric, and he just found out about that, him and Nicole, so he was wrapped tight. He ends up punching Eric cut his eye and stuff, and Eric scurries off and says, okay, the first one's free, but the next one ain't going to be. Alright. Alex runs into Kayla and uh, Stephanie at the hospital because Kayla goes back to work and um, tells Kayla how sorry he is for what happened with him and Stephanie. She appreciates that. So... We see today, well, we actually seen it yesterday. You know, Nicole was having some pains. I don't even have to tell you. If you're like me, you figured out what was going on with Nicole a couple of days ago. Um, so Gabby thinks she's just trying to stop her from sending that scathing report to the board on EJ. But, you know... Nicole starts to bend over. She's in so much pain. Telling Gabby to take her to the hospital. And Gabby's like, yeah, right. Good actress, but Meryl Streep, you ain't. I love Gabby. And, um... She ends up taking her to the hospital. And, uh, that's where it all wraps up. Uh, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. First of all, we go back to Kate. And she ended up trading her big, beautiful engagement ring for a phone call yesterday. And the call didn't go through, but the guy still kept her ring, wouldn't let her have another call. What a bad boy he is. So, um, today she's chopping fish, and he comes in, and she demands to talk to his boss. And uh, she gets his hand and threatens to cut it off cut off his fingers and he's having a fit she's like cut off your fingers I'm gonna cut off your fingers if you don't take me to your boss so he takes her to his boss in this big fancy room and you see the door open he tells her to wait there and she's like you and we don't get to see who the boss is of this man and who's holding her captive they're on the boat You know, I just keep thinking it's Nick, <laughs> but you know, he's an L. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who it could be. Uh, I can't think of anybody. Mm. Keep wanting to say Victor. You know, of course, he is dead in real life, but. They film like six months ahead of time, so I don't know. Just because that's Victor's home and blah 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 blah. Oh my god. My neck is killing me. 
Anyway, um, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, she says it's you. That's the last we see of her. So now we get back to Kayla was trying to tell Nicole when she first came into the hospital. You know, Nicole was burning up, had all these symptoms, and Kayla's like, you're probably in menopause, but we'll do some tests. And, you know, Nicole's like, menopause? I don't think so. And she said, it's true, you know, most women start menopause around 51, 52. It's not unusual for women in their 40s to start having symptoms. And she's like, yeah, right, I've heard, I've heard that. But when Kayla comes back with the start results, she says, no, you're not in menopause. But what is she? Pregnant. Nicole, who wasn't supposed to be able to get pregnant, what? Is pregnant. But with her having all these cramps and stuff, I keep thinking, man, she's probably not going to keep the baby. But what kind of dilemma is this? She is either pregnant by Eric or EJ. She had sex with Eric one time and has had EJ a lot. So it actually depends on how many weeks or how many days pregnant she is. She'd really only be a couple of weeks pregnant or a week pregnant if, she, if it was Eric's. But if this is Eric's baby, you might as well kiss Nicole and EJ. Goodbye. And I do want to see that I did see somewhere that Camilla Banis is leaving days. And that is our Gabby. And I love her so much. I didn't mind that, she, you know, if she wanted to leave, she's been there 13 years. Uh, you know, she has a right to her life to do what she wants. But I got a little aggravated when I read why she was leaving. And they're not willing to work with her schedule. Uh, she's wanting a little more free time. She just, she's just like a very, she's a full-time character is what she is. And uh, they wouldn't work with her with that. And that really uh, kind of ticked me off. Because it's obvious they do work with some of them, right? But anyway, we wish her the best. And I will miss her. She is one of the very few that would actually respond to you on Twitter. Uh, she's quit using her Twitter a couple years ago. but uh, Unless she's got a new one. Then. But... We will miss you, Gabby Hernandez. I'm not worried if they kill her character off because everybody comes back to life. But I hope they don't and they leave it open. Because as we know, everyone that leaves days eventually finds their way back to Salem. So I will see you guys in Salem next week. Um, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, have a great day. It's going to be a beautiful weekend, at least here. And... Uh, we will see you in Salem, peeps.